things seem to be you know getting worse and worse with him in 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 Manish's Manish Sothia's case because now it's not just the CBI but it's also the ED and they say the ED is far more uh, um you know uh, their their claws are far more uh, difficult to get out of uh, because they have far more powers than than the CBI I'm told uh, so um so and also then for, we also know that he was you know there were the, these alleged uh, allegations against him in the education uh, there was an education scam also so um my question is that will arvin K, will this all this you know lead ultimately to Ar- arvin kejriwal at some point because so much is already known about this man um everybody speaks of how he was in the india against corruption and how he rode on the back of uh, anna hazare ji and then made so many tall claims uh, said so many things about so many people in terms of on on account of corruption and his hands are terribly dirty but how is it that he's not been indicted or he's not been called out or why so much silence on this man okay i think there are two or three parts to this question so the yes. first one is how Arvind Kejriwal doesn't get any death sticking on him and the second part is uh, what exactly is going to be the position of Manish Sisodia and the third part is of course the rise and rise of uh, Arvind Kejriwal since Correct. the time of uh, India against corruption Correct So uh, as far as that part is concerned the India against corruption part is concerned I think it's there for everybody to see and as I said right in the beginning how he Uh, kept riding on other shoulders and after that uh, the same thing that uh, you use the ladder and after that you kick the ladder down so that nobody else can climb up and also uh, the people who have uh, climbed up with you you shove them down as well uh, so that in the end you're the only one sitting on the throne at the top so that's been his character so if you look at those india against corruption those photographs and you see the people who were there who were the prominent people manish sisodia was one but uh, even more prominent than arvind kejriwal was kiran bedi kiran bedi exactly. you remember yeah, yeah. and then there was kumar vishwas who, who was a big draw for the uh, crowd that used to gather there and uh, there were of course uh, the, the ubiquitous uh, Prashant Bhushan and Yogendra Yadav. Yes, yes. And uh, there were a host of others. And all of them have disappeared. Manish Sodhya was the last of them. I don't say that he has disappeared. But definitely he is now incarcerated. incarcerated. He, is, uh, he is no longer out in the open. So that is one part. So that kind of uh, <clears throat> buttresses our argument as to the character, the uh, deceptive mendacious character of arvind kejriwal and uh, i think maybe he thinks that uh, uh, if he has to beat rahul gandhi to the position of the challenger then uh, he has to lie more and uh, lie more convincingly than rahul gandhi does because rahul gandhi doesn't convince anyone <laughs> uh kejriwal at least has the credit of having deceived two states or rather one uh, one elections exactly one union territory and one state this completely deceived them and so he has these qualities so he plays on the deception and dissimulation model mm-hmm. so uh, that way we can be called quite successful actually yeah that's exactly what surprises me how was he success how are people voting yeah yeah we'll come to that we'll come to that let me go to the part 3 mm-hmm. let, let me go to the part 3 about manish sisodia and the cases confronting manish sisodia manish sisodia uh, actually there are right now he is confronted with four cases and three of them are with the cbi and one with the with the ed mm-hmm. and you right when you say that ed has greater powers because uh, uh, cbi works is, is very strictly within the ambits of uh, the uh, ipc and the crpc but then uh, under pmla 
the prevention of money laundering act which is supposed to be the exclusive domain of enforcement directorate they have lot greater powers and not only they have their lot greater powers those powers have also been validated recently by the supreme court mm-hmm. so uh, they are in a very happy situation of uh, doing pretty much as they please mm-hmm. uh, well it can be a double edged sword for uh, anybody who is uh, using that but then that's how it is at this point and all advantage to the uh, ruling party and as far as that is concerned now you must also know that the enforcement directorate actually comes under the finance ministry the cbi is supposedly independent though it does come technically under the department of personnel and training and thereby under directly under the pmo but then uh, the cbi director is appointed through a very very uh, transparent and a neutral process so it is de jure i'm not saying de facto but de jure it is considered to be neutral enforcement director is directly under the finance ministry so they are on a different footing and now there are four cases the one is this excise scam as maroj uh, on manish sisodia the other one which i think is uh, a lesser one is uh, the school scam school yes where a certain constructions have been done in all the schools and they are under a cloud mm-hmm. then the third one is this ed case this prevention of money laundering act pmla and that case and that pertains to the transfer of unauthorized transfer of 100 crores to the south cartel and there is another one and that is the feedback unit that case has also been referred to the cbi now that feedback unit was actually a unit that was created after the aam aadmi party lost control of the acb because acb police function and that police function was invested exclusively with the uh, central government and uh, uh, to, to the mha and to the lieutenant governor and uh, they lost control on that after the supreme court judgments and all so they created this feedback unit mm-hmm. under the vigilance setup and this feedback unit uh, has been found to be actually doing unauthorized espionage oh my god within delhi that's what the charges are and that also with the cbi and uh, once that comes to fruition then your initial question mm. about kejriwal mm. how kejriwal manages to stay apart i think that also might get addressed okay and within this you also asked how kejriwal manages to stay aloof yeah. from all this is because he doesn't sign any files 16 portfolios with this guy manish sisodia and he doesn't have any <laughs> he doesn't keep any portfolio he, officially he doesn't sign anything Correct. all he does is whatever he has to do he do, does it in a cabinet meeting because he presides over the cabinet meeting but technically he can't really get away from uh, many things because uh, the transaction of business rules provide that any cabinet note that goes to the cabinet meeting has to be first vetted by the chief minister it is only with the permission of the chief minister that a cabinet note can be put up to the cabinet and of course if any cabinet decision is taken the chief minister is presiding over there so it is only it through that route that chief minister will ultimately come to grief that is one okay. and the second is of course 
if somebody sings, if somebody sings, <laughs> right. whether like a canary or like a cuckoo or whatever, <laughs> then, only, 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 then also Kejriwal can actually uh, come into the Correct. net. Otherwise, he's fairly safe. Mm-hmm. Imagine the new lieutenant governor had to give him an instruction that any file that you send to governor, Mr. K. Jriwal, you have to sign it personally. <laughs> exactly. And it's quite amazing because I spent 35 years in these services and I cannot think of any file going to the governor from the chief minister without his without signature. A signature. <laughs> And uh, I have seen, except, you know, certain cases where uh, some people, Vasundra Raja had devised this in Rajasthan, Mm -hmm. where uh, uh, if you sent her a file for signatures, for her approval, according to the business rules, and uh, it would come back saying, the chief minister has seen the file, you know, whatever that means. Chief Minister has seen the file means nothing. And uh, it was supposed to convey her approval. Mm. But then uh, it was so vaguely worded that if anything went wrong, she doesn't have then she she is absolutely free that uh, she would say that what have uh, what has been written. Mm. Firstly, it has been written by my Secretary, secretary. This, the, my private secretary or the uh, the CMO setup, the chief minister's office setup. So it doesn't bear my signature. Mm-hmm. So how do we know whether she has actually seen it or not? She can always turn around and say that I, I haven't seen it. And whatever has been written, that responsibility falls on the guy who's, uh, who said this. So chief minister seen this, then they also created uh, 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 another intra-CMO notings, okay? Now this intra-CMO notings are very interesting, is that a file goes to the chief minister's office. Mm-hmm. Then this procedure is followed in the finance department, at least in Rajasthan. I don't know about uh, uh, Delhi and the uh, ministries because I haven't worked in Delhi ministry, so that I'm not very familiar with. So over here, the finance department used to have this internal file system. So she developed this internal file file system where the extracts would be taken, mm. the file that has come to the chief minister's office. Then there would be internal notings, and on the basis of that, you know, something would be said. And these internal notings would be destroyed in later on. Mm-hmm. So all this is done and this has been perfected by Kejriwal Mm. to the extent that he even started sending files to the governor, lieutenant governor, without without his signature. (laughs) Chief Minister Ji ne, Mukhi Mantri Mahoday ne dekh liya hai. (laughs) That that doesn't work with the lieutenant governor. It may work with a minister or it may work with a lower down official, a, a secretary, who has been told informally that if it comes to you, ki Mukhya Mantri Mahoday ne dekh liya hai, that means it bears his approval. Mm. And then the Mukhya Mantri can very conveniently shift the blame on <laughs> the person in question if there is any trouble. Correct. Uh, this, is the, this is now being done by quite a few chief ministers, mm. I'm told. But there are very few who still put their signatures on the file. That's very unfortunate because that is actually shirking responsibility. Right, right. But, uh, I haven't seen that. I saw that for the first time with uh, Vasundra Raje. Uh, I believe the present chief minister has again reversed that trend. Mm-hmm. But then it's it's uh, very disturbing. And right. I think <laughs> it's actually... Uh, the central government it? should make it absolutely clear, bring in a law mm. un, under the <clears throat> articles that govern the government business uh, to make it absolutely clear that the, uh, whatever is being approved by the chief minister, his signatures must be there. So this is the artifice that Kejriwal uses. Mm. Which explains why he's scot-free and all his minions are in jail. <laughs> 
<laughs> Now minions have to sing Correct. in order in order that Kejriwal lands yeah. in jail. But apparently he posted something on Twitter with the the fam, you know outside the the home residence of Manish Sisodia saying that I'll take care of your family. So people are trying to <laughs> <laughs> interpret it in many different ways. I mean, God knows what that means. Uh, but I really hope for the safety of the family. Please remember to subscribe to us and switch on the notifications for this channel. For our other social media links, more content and to support our work, please visit citti.net. Dhanyavad. Namaskar.